Hey, good morning, golfing world. It's Monday morning golf wrap with the three amigos. We got Brother Al back in the house. We're back. We're back cooking with gas. Oh, that's it. No mercy for the week. Yeah. Tell him you better be tough because the stupid will be punished. <laughs> that's right. Woo. Good to have him back. Oh. We got a new sponsor. Yeah. We got a don't, new sponsor. Don't, 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 Smoky don't. Mountain Pickled Possum Peckers. We want to thank the folks at Pickled Possum Peckers. We got it. Hey, I appreciate you bringing them in. Hey, no problem, buddy. Anytime. Yeah. My hey, hey, uh, you got really something on your mind before we get into golf. And, and you know, I, I heard you talking about it before the show, and I just wanted to bring it up for our viewing and, and listeners. Yep. yep. Um, I understand you got referred to as a hillbilly over the weekend. Yeah, it's been brought to my attention that I've been called a hillbilly redneck. So, henceforth, everybody out there, I want to be referred to as an Appalachian American. Appalachian <laughs> American. Political correctness Political is correct. very important on this show. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And our sponsors make sure we want to really point that out. So Definitely. For those of you around the world that don't understand, Appalachian means the Hatfield to McCoy's. <laughs> you can't beat it. And we needed that to explain Yes. <laughs> so, Appalachian American. Yes, sir. That's how we're referred to you now. You can't do it. Have you filed for a casino permit? I, I'm on top of that right now. Good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. You can't do it. I hope you get it. I need a job. <laughs> <laughs> this one here may be limited. <laughs> I love it. Especially after today. <laughs> you can't beat it. Well, boys, a little weekend update. Saturday Golf Group went out and visited Jimmy Biggs and uh, Crow Creek, and they had a good time. Wasn't able to join them. Yeah, but they you, had a good time. I heard you had a good time. I had a blast. <laughs> and that's all we're going to say about it. <laughs> I had a blast. I I played in the true scramble per the definition. Yes. Yes. No doubt about it. it she leave who it. must be obeyed. We'll leave it right there. She who, yeah, she who must be obeyed gave me directions that I was to play. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. It was awesome, dude. <laughs> well, I want to send out congratulations. We got the winner of um, the Possum Drop put on a little charity golf tournament for me, which I can't thank them enough. Um, and Mr. Um, Mr. Honeycutt over here was able to acquire quite a few teams for us, and um, I just would like to thank him so very, very much for You're doing that. You're quite welcome. And also congratulate him on his team's win. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be in the area all day. That's right. Me and the pickled. Possum Peckers by Smoky Mountain. Mr. Honeycutt. <laughs> Lost your mind. Mr. Honeycutt. Dude, if that's just not an absolute... He's just being <laughs> respectful. Buckle. I mean, I call that's him true. Appalachian American, so... <laughs> but respect? Oh, yes. <laughs> well deserved. Well, well he deserved. He won the tournament. I mean, that's right. You know? That's what pencils and erasers do. Yeah. <laughs> The great thing about it is, is if I'd really tried to use that pencil, I use a sharpie. That's tough to do. Okay, you got to keep it in the lines. Waste your breath on somebody else. <laughs> All right, um, I ended up playing in the the Coastal Carolina Realtors Association tournament or something like that. Carolina Realtors or something like that out at River Oaks. Scott Taylor's doing great. Uh, golf course in good shape, so we had a lot of fun. I, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Good. <laughs> Don't go any further. We're not, not. We had a lot of fun. So they had a lot of participation. They won 50 plus. So it was a good turnout. I tell you what, every time you go by there, place is nice. Yeah, filled out all 27 holes, and um, yeah, we had a good time. So um, a lot of stuff happening over the weekend, guys. Uh, everybody was on Tiger Watch. Oh, no doubt. Tiger Watch. I mean, hats off to him. I lost a, a wager. I put some money down that he would not make the cut. So, he proved me wrong. I'm paying off my wager today, by the way. Yeah. Hey, you, it, it, what, I robbed this, uh, this chipping. It's, it's chipping and chipping and chipping. What, what you, your inside. What, it's what's chipping, it, chipping, it's, and that's exactly what he's I mean, doing. It's, he well, chips what, and he chips what's your, again. What's your chips personal again. inside? And what's going on with that? Oh, Lord. <laughs> That, man. <laughs> I mean, it's, okay, driving, it's, driving me, it's driving me nuts. The I Dolly just want to know what he thinks. 
All right, Jeff. Go I ahead, quit. dude. <laughs> All right, Dolly. Let me hear it. Long. You watch. You watch him when he chips. Okay. When he hits pitches. You know, uh, flop shots. He's actually pretty good with because he hits a full swing of it. Okay. But when it's a shorter shot, he he gets. It's very shallow. There is a little more movement in his lower body than I'd like to see. Okay. And then you see as he comes into the ball, he decels, and I mean he moves a lot. Yep. And I just think there's it's got to be a lot more stable in his lower half. Uh, Set you know maybe 60 40 weight towards the left, get the club to hinge, and then make sure the heel of that wedge hits your, hits your ground. Well, is it? I mean, is it? Is it kind of like you know how you get the yips with the putt? And I've heard people getting oh yeah, yips dude. with oh, Jimmy. Yeah. I mean, is he at borderline? Uh, possibility, but I don't think so. I mean, you look, he played too well, and he hit a lot of good pitches. Okay, you know? um, that golf course there is one of those that you know. You get down grain and you short side yourself, you don't have much of a chance anymore. So you're gotcha. trying to be get cute with it or you're just playing it safe and getting one of the feet. Some of the quickest there. greens they probably played this year, except for maybe Augusta. And the Beaver Bermuda grass. Yeah. I mean, extremely good. And, and, you know, I just, it's just not, yeah, the triple bogey yesterday really bugged me. But I tell you what. The well, Al, you have a complete recount of his triple bogey, don't you? Oh, no doubt. No you doubt. have a. You have a yeah, this was right from Tiger's interview afterwards. He comes out and he says, well, I pulled my tee shot just a touch. Uh, the five iron from the rough, high. Um, yeah, I hit it high on the face. on the, um, And then he the, then left blade, and then he hit a muff chip. Um, then he had a putt um, that he putted too hard, and then he pulled the six putt. And then he come out and said, the seventh putt was right in the hole. The seventh shot? The seventh shot was Dead center. Dead center. Yeah. So. And yeah. our old favorite line from Ballesteros. I miss, I miss, I miss, I miss. I love it. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's. He's, he, well, he finishes tied 10th. Uh, I mean, the guy, it's coming back. It's just a matter of him continuing along the trail to get his confidence But, back. you know, I sat there like through, through the entire up. week, Thursday, Friday, especially, 64-64. Great. Good plan. Is that right? 64-65. 64-65. I was close. And I got asked by She Who Must Be Obeyed in highlight reviews Friday night, why is he playing all of a sudden so well? And I said, well, obviously he's listening to you. I said, because, look, he's only swinging at 80%, yeah. and he can basically manage his way around a golf course with a tumor. He doesn't have to hit driver. And he's just he's just putting it out there. His little stingers was what kept him in that golf tournament. His approach shots, you saw it from 180 in, nice little three quarter swing. I never saw one over the top. He was just nice through. He didn't dip at the ball. He didn't drop his head. He wasn't trying to swing out of his shoes. He wasn't he wasn't doing all this flailing after he hit. I just I told her I said, finally listen to you. Smooth. He's at 80 percent. Yep. And she goes, well, does he have a chance to win? I said, no. The old Tiger will show up sometime. And it did in the fact, I mean, he still finished tied for 10. But hats off to Davis Love for winning the doggone thing. Yeah, 51 years old. Four months, 10 days. Man, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. Good stuff. And then his Victory number 21. Yeah, and in his quote I really liked after the tournament, um, he says, it's incredible. He says, I'm just incredibly blessed. Mm-hmm. That was his That was his quote after the tournament. Third oldest winner in PGA Tour history. Did you know that? Nope. Little, little, little snippet of fact. How about that? Um, Jason Gore, bless his heart, played his way into the FedEx Cup. You know, I really thought uh, the way watching him play, it was, you know, he, he, it was his golf tournament to win. Mm. And, and I think, you know. Yeah, but <laughs> Love goes out there and, you know, shoots a little six under 64. So, you know, it's not like he was hovering at the top and then, you know, they were trying to catch him. No, but, I mean, Jason went out there. He was playing very well. And he, he actually played well yesterday until he made the two bogeys in a row. And right. He made the eagle, and he got in there and had it, and he just hit some poor golf shots coming in, trying to push it and force it. Um, you know, I was pulling for Scott Brown. I mean, I've known Scott since he was probably 14, 15 years old up from North Augusta, you know, when I lived in Aiken. And, you know, the young man has always just had a dream. He doesn't come from a lot of money, but his family does okay. But it was his dream to play on the PGA Tour. You know, and Tiger 
was always his hero, and he got to play with him yesterday and then met a hole in one in front of him. Yeah, that's awesome. and, and who did I say <laughs> look for last Thursday? We were talking about this on the air. I made the comment, you need to keep an eye on number 125, Charles Swartzel, because he is going to play like a man obsessed and make sure that he makes this to the Barclays, makes it the FedEx Cup yes. race. And, you know, Charles goes out there and shoots 67, 66, 66, 66. That's some damn good playing. He had some good Finishes shoot. third, um, 15 under, and, and you would think the 15 really could win the tournament. But, again, Davis shoots 64, 66, 69, and then 64 on Sunday, which ends up giving him the win. Jason Gore, 62 on Saturday, was really good. That was a really good score. And uh, then you look at Paul Casey, again, had another good event, finishes tied third. Scott Brown, as you mentioned, Hugh. Brooks Kepka, who seems to be in the top ten now for the last several events. I, I tell you what, I think this is, you know, kind of the uh, up-and-coming new version of our, you know. The young guy. Number one player. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's just a day player. I don't know. I don't know if he's quite got that, but he's definitely going to be. He's on the right track. He's going to be on President's Cup participant, and I definitely see him playing a Ryder Cup. That's a possibility. I was have seen it. Yeah. Was picks and play. Uh, Carl Patterson uh, ended up at 14 under par, 3 under for yesterday. He finishes tied for 6th. Webb Simpson has a good event. He finishes at 14 under. Uh, Ryan Moore, who was in discussions not only for his play at this tournament, but also a record that he held with three other gentlemen, got um, got matched this week. And that was, uh, of course, the U.S. Amateur, won by Byron DeChambeau. Byron DeChambeau, he becomes the fifth player in golf history to win the NCAA Individual Championship and also the U.S. Amateur in the same year. That's, that's interesting. That's the crazy. fifth player. Do you know who the others were? I mentioned one. Probably Jack. Jack? Tiger. Tiger? Ryan Moore, as I mentioned. He, he was the real unknown in this whole group. And then you've left one out. Mickelson. Oh, I don't know. I can't think of you. Yep. Jack, Jack did it in 61. Mickelson okay. did it in 90. Okay. Woods did it in 96. And Ryan Moore did it in 04. That's and now DeChambeau. Yeah, because Ryan Moore won it up in 04. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, of course, DeChambeau is known for his now trend-setting uh, club makeup in his bag. All of his irons are 37 and a half inches long, uh, from his wedges all the way up to his quote unquote two iron. So they're all 37 and a half inches long. They all have the same quote unquote frequency match. They've all got the same MOI. And so he feels as comfortable with one as he does another, and he swings them all the same way. So, and I'll tell you, he was quite impressive. I mean, the guy had. Uh, literally over 30 holes in the there's a 36 hole championship round. In those 30 holes that it took, he ends up winning seven and six, one of the largest margins in 50 years. He ends up with nine birdies over those 30 holes. Actually, over his six matches, he was 20 under par in his six matches. Man, that's so, that's at incredible. Olympia Fields yeah. in Illinois. Not an easy golf course, boy. Yeah. So, and Saturday the wind picked up, and you talk about fast greens. They had those things lit yeah. up. The, from what I heard from the players, it was the, the back nine, you know, it, it was, was where it really where it got interesting. Oh, said it, it got, yeah. the course got tougher. Well, the wind picked up. You, yep. you watch them making club choices, and yeah. one minute they would be hitting nine irons 190 yards, and the next minute they were hitting nine irons uh, maybe 100, maybe 80. And so, and of course, Olympia Fields has a little bit of elevation deviation between tee boxes and greens, but primarily it's those putting surfaces. I mean, they were just dastardly. I watched a couple of those putts, and they were commenting on the young men that were out there playing this thing, and they were saying, he better be careful spotting that. (laughs) You know, you hear the little quiet commentator, I think he needs to be careful spotting that. (laughs) That could start rolling. So, but uh, hats off to all the participants. This is a grueling, 
grueling week. If there was anything that's probably close to old Q school, it would probably be the U.S. Amateur or the U.S. Mid Am. No. No? No. As far as timing and it number is. of days and number of rounds, it and is very because you go stroke play it's, and then you go match play. It's grueling. It's very tough. But when it's your livelihood and your oh, I, yeah, gear, yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. Game. I see what you mean. Um, I understand what you're saying about being near. I mean, you're there in 10, <coughs> 10 days, 10, 12 yeah. days, easy. And you're spending a lot of time, but that's what you want to be there for. Mm-hmm. There for it's sure, sure. Day. And as you get to going through and you, you know, it, as long as you don't have to go to too many playoffs to keep advancing, you know, it's not too, too bad. Mm-hmm. Um, the 36 whole days get tough, um, but these kids are college are supposed to be over here. Yeah. Well, it ended up, uh, DeChambeau ended up playing. Um, a young man uh, from New Hartford, New York, uh, Derek Bard, who surprised everyone on Saturday by winning his match against Rom. And Rom is the number one ranked amateur in the world. And Rom ends up hitting, I mean, his average drive is like 308. He, he kills it. He's got a swing that never goes above his waist in the back. Um, but all of a sudden, the putter came to play, and Bard just, he was half as long as Rom. He, he was hitting from 220 out, where Rom was hitting from 140 every hole. Every hole. So it was the hybrids against the wedges. And Bard's putter, he just started making putts. Yep. And Rom just didn't know how to handle it. And he ended up making bogey, bogey, bogey the last three holes. Ended up going from four up at nine to lose in the match by one. So that's match play and that's the beauty of it. Yep. So congratulations to Bard for even making it there. I knew once he took on DeChambeau, there was no Bard didn't have anything for him because DeChambeau is just gonna sit here and, and dart you to death. Yeah. He's just gonna dart you all day long. So and nine birdies over basically thirty holes, that's a pure example of that. Pretty, so yeah, pretty he's a grinder. Oh, he's just, he's not going to get himself in trouble. He had a couple of flail tee balls both yesterday and Saturday during semifinal play. And uh, my goodness, he's coming out of three to four inch rough. And he's mentally really playing the shot the way he should. Like uh, Hugh would go out and tell him, you know, in course management, if you get here, go ahead and take your medicine and move on. And that's exactly what he was doing. Yep. He was playing fat part of the greens. He was playing the open part of the greens to get the run up in case he came out hot. And uh, where the others were forcing the shots by trying to go with the pins or whatever, coming up short, burying their balls in the bunkers, things of that sort. Yeah, so, it's all about you know handling your emotions to where you don't make <laughs> poor decisions. Because you get on a golf course like that in conditions like that, you can't, you can't make it happen. Have, like you said, George, you have to take your medicine. You have to try to just make pars and keep moving on. And obviously that pays off. Well, it did. And uh, another example of that was one Miss Lydia Coe yesterday ends up winning the Bo- uh, the um, uh, Canadian Pacific Women's Open in Vancouver. And this in a playoff with one Stacy Lewis, who basically comes up from the bottom of the ranks Stacy had shot 67 to match Lydia's 12 under par posting at the end of the round. Lydia only squeaked out an even par 72 in the last round, which you're sitting there going, my gosh, is she ever going to make a birdie? I'm watching this, watching this going, don't let this fall away, young lady. You know, she's hitting fairway, she's hitting greens, but she couldn't have made a putt yesterday if it was a 55-gallon drum. Then she gets in the first playoff hole, and she makes the putt she needs to. Nice little 10-footer, drains it, wins wins the match. That's ironic. So, sometimes have. Yeah. Have so time. congratulations to the phenom again, Lydia Coe. And, and what I found interesting, guys, was yesterday the conversation from the commentators, especially Jerry Faust, um, the commentators were already talking about her The future Hall of Famer, the future Hall of Famer, the future Hall of Famer. That's all you heard. Three wins on the LPGA Tour. She's 17 years old, and they're already referring to her as a future Hall of Famer. That, you know, I'm sitting here going, okay. 
Don't you think that's a little early call? <laughs> I, I find that hard to believe Jerry would say something like that. Well, he did. He's Obviously, you could tell it was a tagline that they wanted to go ahead and they were told to yes. in pre-production. Okay. Because it was mentioned first behind the desk, and then it was starting to get repeated out on the course by the course commentary. Yeah. And so this, you know, the future Hall of Famer, she needs to make a putt. The future Hall of Famer, she's she's keeping it under control. You know, just references like that. So they're trying to create a spark uh, for the LPGA. Mm -hmm. so Maybe, yeah, a, another tagline. Yeah. Right. So, but uh, again, she well deserved. Lydia Ko wins another event. Uh, again, like I said, this is her third LPGA Tour event and win and second of this year. So uh, congratulations to her. And, of course, now we come into the race for the uh, CME Globe. And uh, also, too, coming up is the Solheim Cup. Now, uh, guys, I went through the roster for the Solheim Cup, and if you all want to bring this up, um, I would encourage you to do so, but um, the Solheim Cup and the roster of participants that are included in that, I have one big complaint about, and I'm not going to take it up here because it will take several minutes to me for me to lay out my argument, but on the first sheet of the U.S. team for the Solheim Cup is Michelle Wee. And right now, Michelle Wee could fight her way out of a wet paper sack. Sorry. She couldn't break. What do you say? What do you say? She couldn't break a plate glass window from 50. <laughs> Thank you very much. And all she did, I mean, folks, this tournament this week, it was a four-day event, of course, and she doesn't make the cut. She shoots 74-75, but she's right there on that Solheim Cup team. I, I don't know. She couldn't even beat Natalie Galbus. Natalie Galbus shot 74 74. So, I, I, you know, all I hear is, is, oh, my ankle hurts. Oh, my thigh hurts. Oh, my hip hurts. Oh, my elbow hurts. Oh, my wrist hurts. You know, where's my Nike check? I, you know, right. come on. I, I, the, I, you look at one Brooke Henderson, that's an individual that needs to be on that team, not Michelle Wee. I understand. She wins the U.S. Open last year. You can't take that away from her. I understand. I understand. But she hasn't done anything. She wins the U.S. Open, yes. Recently. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Recently. And it always seems to be something. So, I don't know if she's got a little bit of tigeritis or what, but it just seems to be cultivated in the Nike water. So, Whatever. I'll, I'll let you, we'll, we'll argue this point later. <laughs> How'd you like that? It's in the Nike uh, water tower. How about that? All right, seniors, let's talk a little bit about Champions Tour. Billy Andre ends up with the win. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's, he's, we've been friends since college. And, um, I, I'll never forget playing in Athens. The first time I'd ever put it on greens, it was probably back then. Him being from, you know, up in Rhode Island, he and Daddy on the putt green helped me with my putting. Where were you really playing at in Athens? At the Georgia Club? At the Country Club. Yeah. yeah Athens Country Club. And uh, we were sitting there, and he, Daddy was helping me, and Billy was helping me. It was just, it was comical, to be honest. And uh, he ended up going out and finishing up the last two days and played some. And we just, every time I see him, he goes, so how's that putting going? So <laughs> I was glad to see Billy win. He, he is a great guy. He lives in Atlanta now. Just, just a super, super fantastic fellow. Well, they were up in Washington at the Boeing Classic, and we had talked about this, Hugh, last week, about that area and how beautiful it is. What, what a gorgeous golf course that uh, Snow Squally is, is, uh, you know, the TPC there. Um, but interestingly, Billy goes out and ends up shooting 73 in his last round and only wins by one. I mean, he's sitting there watching. He's playing with Bernhard Longer, who um, – who ends up only shooting 71, but uh, was just pressing him all the way, including the potential eagle putt on 18 that would have put him into a tie. Um, Andre had hit his drive into a bunker. He had to take a nine iron basically out, put it into the fairway, and then 
he needed to hit another nine iron up close to the pin. He had 143, and uh, he hit it solid. He, matter of fact, uh, when he hit the shot, he made the comment to his caddy. He goes, "Is that good?" And the caddy goes, "That's good." And then the ball lands, and he's about 15 feet away for birdie. So uh, now, of course, Bernhard Longer had the chance to put the tie into the house. Uh, he ends up with a just a real slick putt downhill that had moved left to right. He didn't get it out far enough left, just finished a little bit low. He taps in for birdie, and then Andre misses his birdie putt, taps in for par from one inch, and ends up securing the win. So congratulations to Billy Andre, his second champion tour win, his first solo win. Yeah, first solo win. Yeah. He was with Durant, uh, Joe Durant, at Springfield. At the Springfield, yep, the event. It was and nice to uh, see Guy Boré play well. Oh, was it well? Yeah, Guy Boris finished uh, <laughs> tied for third. Guy Boré. Guy Boré, that's what Pete Jordan and I used to call him all the time. <laughs> Guy, we used to like practice rounds together. He's the one who was on the practice team at <laughs> the time down at Durant when I was on the practice Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, when we. Uh, and in Freddie Couples' backyard, he plays well. He played well. Finishes Freddie seven under. Freddie Quinn played well. Mark O'Mara again, seven under par. Um, you know, you had several names in there that are trying to get their way back up into the, you know, the Swap Cup and the challenge of the Swap Cup as we start moving toward the end of their season. So you got the FedEx Cup, Swap Cup, the race for the CME Globe, and we've got the President's Cup coming up in Korea, which today the captains are making their announcements on their captain's picks. So we'll be happy to report that later on in the week. We'll talk about those teams and the selections by the captains on both sides of the house. And uh, and then we talked about the Solheim Cup. I would like to take that into conversation, too, uh, at some later point, if you would humor me and allow me to do that. Jeff, we need a lot of five-hour energy. That's right. <laughs> Are you going to be bored? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 I just know how you're going to foam at the mouth about just a couple of subjects. So I just, you know, foam at the mouth. Foam at the mouth. You know, look, we got a lot to talk about coming up. There's going to be some fun extra Al, I'm glad you're line. back, dude. Would y'all swap chairs next time? No. Uh, next week, we're going to be busy. We're broadcasting from the convention center here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We'll be at the World Amateur Handicap Championship each night. The golf director will be broadcasting live, I believe, Jeff had informed us, from the convention center floor. That's right. And so the three amigos will be there, of course. I anticipate and encourage all of our viewers and listeners from all over the globe. Be sure to get on the, the old laptop, the computer, your smartphone, wherever you're viewing us at and listening to us at. And join us. And if you're in Myrtle Beach, come to the convention center. Come see us. We're going to do some handouts. Cool. And I'm really hoping that the Smoky Mountain Pickled Possum Peckers <laughs> is one of our sponsors. <laughs> I apologize, folks. The man is just crazy. He apologizes. We will have a blast. Oh, so we're going to have a good time. Tune in and, and uh, you'll enjoy it. We're, we've got something planned for each night. All kind of prizes to give away. I trainer is sending us uh, uh, I trainers, to, so we'll be able to give away an in-home simulator each night. Uh, compliments of Izzo and I trainer. We'll have the math. The that's phenomenal. The I trainer. We'll, have, we'll be able to give away one a night. Man, that's big. And we're going to have fifty of them for sale on there as well. How about for the Godfather? Uh, we're going to have <laughs> a cup of water for you. A cup of water. Yeah. And some Smoky Mountain. Pick <laughs> That's right. And get him a new cone. And a pack of saltine crackers. <laughs> yeah, get, yeah, get him a pack of the, a, a new cone for his, you know, dad yeah. to Dan. I like my Smoky Mountain pickle pocket possum peckers yeah, yeah. with mustard. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Did I say hey, that enough? You, you, you got to use Grey Poupon. Grey Poupon. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> call call poupon. the pickle possum peckers. <laughs> Frenchies just won't do. You notice I'm behaving. I'm behaving. I'm glad you are. I, I, I think both of these are Appalachian Americans, if you don't mind. Oh. <laughs> well, folks, it's been so much fun spending a Monday morning with you. We're so happy to be able to bring you the Monday morning golf wrap. And we're so happy to have Brother Al back. We have sorely missed him. And, missed uh, you guys. Big yeah, time. Good to have you back. Big time. Uh, we got coming up this week also another Tech Talk with Al Cloyd. That's right. That's going to be fun. 
Yes, sir. We have no clue what we're going to talk about, but it's going to be tacky. We're going to get it. That's right. <laughs> there could be. We're going to get some. That's right. Yeah. You're going to try it? Yeah. We'll try to get interested. I just like for you to stay awake. That's all. All right. You got anything as else? As, as long as we don't talk HR about HR three. As long as we don't talk about yeah. grips, he'll be all right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. That's right. All right. So you, you know, you ought to feel pretty good today. I mean, Davis Love the third, HR three. You know, yeah, if you I could, see the pattern. Yeah. If I could ever get healthy, I'd you, could, you could probably jump into one of these putt putt contests down here and win that I sucker. Could have. I, I'd jump on it. I'd get all over that thing. TGD Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. When visiting the Golf Director, be sure to check out our featured course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, and much more. Need help with your next golf vacation? Just call Dave. Give us a call right here at 844-GO-GOLF-1, 844-464-6531. All of our programming is archived for listening whenever you want to view it or listen to it. Just tune on to thegolfdirector.com and click on the TGD Radio or the TGD TV tabs in the menu screen. We're now available on over 1 billion Billion. devices at iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Blueberry, and Myrtle Beach Golf App. For Al Cloyd, Hugh Roy III, I'm George Honeycutt. We want to thank Jeff behind the glass, and we want to thank y'all for joining us here on Monday Morning Golf Wrap, being sponsored by the Smoky Mountain Pickle Possum Peckers. That's right.